Well, hello again. This is Steve, and today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different, but it's something that might affect many people out there in the world, and maybe it would affect you if you were listening here or watching here today, if you're one of the few. And it's along the lines of what this guy, Formafist, you can look it up, F-O-R-M-A-F-I-S-T. This guy does some great analytical videos on real estate projections and where he thinks real estate prices are going in the next while. He's specifically Vancouver-centric, I would say, but he talks about different areas too, and he does a great job of laying out how he sees things going based on charts and graphs and so on that he's able to compile. And I will put a link in the description down below. I don't know this guy. I'm not endorsing it. I just, I, he's just pretty impressive the way he presents things. That's all. Now, one of the things he's talking about is this slowdown in the Vancouver real estate market and how that is beginning to spill over into the Toronto market. And he uses the parallel of how in the 2008, uh, 2009 slowdown that happened in the U.S., which Canada largely averted due to basically a lot of Chinese money being poured in to the Vancouver and Toronto markets, uh, he, he, he shows that how L.A. was sort of the leading vanguard and then that spilled over about a year later into the New York market and and then of course all to the other smaller centers around the US. Well he uses a very similar parallel here and he's able to show the early signs of that of those lines just you know lining up almost exactly to what he's talking about. So he's talking about largely those big pictures. Now some of his charts he shows how he lays out in the US as you know, historical evidence shows. You see this LA, this ramp up, right? This plateauing and then this, cra this crash. And New York is slightly behind it, but slightly lower, right? And then all the little centers are down below with a lower, lower, lower trajectory of rise and then a little bit of lag and then a, and a taper off. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the, the smaller centers that I've looked at more recently within, within so-called Canada. And just to give an idea of, of how I see these things playing out too. And what are, the, what are the telltales? You've probably heard the analogy of the, 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 the stone dropping in the puddle, right? So when it hits the water, it's the, the water starts to ripple out in an effect like that. Well, boom and busts go like that kind of in a way too, where the boom starts in the major center and then it ripples out. And then the same with the contraction. It starts in the major center and it, and it ripples out like that. But there's more of a ripple in the middle, of course, because it loses its energy as it gets in to the point where eventually it's, it's almost completely petered out. So in the hint, certain parts of the hinterland, even during the you know, Great Depressions and so on, nobody even really knows it happens because it has such little effect by the time it gets that far out. But nevertheless, you see these things on the periphery. And I remember years ago, I had a real, a real estate a realtor friend of mine I lived in Greater Vancouver, and there was this spot which everybody kind of joked about. They called it Wally World, basically. It was part of Surrey. And, of course, government was always trying to, you know, create you know, special favorable zoning and so on to promote the development of this area. Of course, it's being developed now because, you know, just because there was so much pressure, so much foreign uh, money laundering and so on coming in that they had to, you know, find space to build. But back in the day... I saw several cycles, several real estate cycles. And every time there'd be, right at the end of the cycle, you'd see those T cranes in Wally World. And that was an indication that this is the end of the boom, right? And sure enough, it would be the end of the boom because what happens is that everything gets so expensive in the center and it's all going like crazy that the, the people who don't have quite enough money, the developers who don't have quite enough money, they go into the, to the marginal land at the periphery and they start building. Well, there's a point where that marginal, you know, uh, call by these latecomers is the end of the line for that particular cycle, right? And it just so that so 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 uh, turned out that Wally was it, right? And the prairies has a similar effect. Like there's an ominous sign here now. Here in Saskatoon, you see these tea cranes in downtown, and I have never seen more than just one temporarily to repair something like a, you know, AC unit or something. But there's actually high rises going up with T cranes. That's, 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 that's Wally World on the prairies. 
this is this is uh is crazy really so that's that's the one thing that i'm noticing is this you know he starts talking about so vancouver the crash there start, started you know a year or so ago i guess and here it is a year later and it looks like the downtown core of saskatoon is booming a very interesting very similar to wally I mean, saskatoon the new wally maybe that's the name for this this video but nobody would know what the hell that is <laughs> so anyway uh the other thing a little place I went to, I visited recently. I visited this little boom town called Kitimat. It's on the north coast of British Columbia, near the near the Alaskan Panhandle. And there is, I think, a four billion dollar. This is a town of six thousand people. Four billion dollar mega project moving in, with potentially ten thousand direct workers. I'm talking direct workers to work on the project. Not to mention all the spin-off with people who got to run restaurants and services and what have you. There might be a, and there, I don't know, another multiple of what, 0.5 or something. There's several thousand people would come in. You would think there would be an outrageous, complete real estate boom. It's, it's in certain segments there. It's like crickets. You know, you can hear the crickets almost. That's how quiet it is. And I suspect what it is is that the investors, a lot of them who would come out of places like Vancouver, are incredibly gun shy right now. And they're really nervous. They don't want to, they don't want to buy anything, because they see their portfolios, perhaps going in the tank. Right. So, I guess the 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 importance of a, of a discussion like this is to see what the, is to is to not not so much in my case. I mean, Formafist, yeah, he's very he's very informative. I'm not trying to inform anybody in terms of charts and graphs and what have you. It's just to maybe call out to people to maybe think about think about where you know how we're exposed and you know is is like w how much danger are we in or how much benefit are we in right and i would say that places like vancouver um one of the things that somebody once said to me years ago about vancouver was basically what we do and especially maybe it was victoria but especially victoria what we do here is tourism and real estate. Like, there's not much else. There really isn't, like, the core of the industry there is that, is, well, government as well. Government, uh, tourism, and real estate. Basically, not a lot of industry in terms of percentage. Compare that to a place like Saskatoon, okay? Saskatoon has almost no tourism. Nobody comes here unless it's to work. It's basically like a l large open-air work camp for the most part. You know, we have massive amounts of mining in the area. We have oil and gas, which, yeah, both of those are kind of a little bit down right now, but they're industries, they're real core industries that produce products that people use every day, right? Agriculture, um, the Saskatchewan in general produces 40% of the, of the um, saleable crops in all of Canada. 40% of, you think about that, grown crops in all of Canada, receipts. And huge amounts of manufacturing for agricultural machinery. This, these are all important industries. These are core industries. And every one of those, if, you know, in, in, usually even in a downturn, there's maybe one of those could be doing well you could have a massive downturn you could have droughts in other areas of the world and then saskatoon's crops are in are in demand when their crops are in demand so are their maybe their manufacturing is is in demand so these things are a greater diversity of of um of industry whereas you t take a place like vancouver or victoria and perhaps even toronto any major urban center they're heavy weighted on their real estate the real estate investment, real estate development, real estate renovation, and servicing, and all of that sort of thing. So when that takes a massive hit, that affects that. It, it, that's that's why I think you see the higher rise in the price, but also, of course, the greater fall because you have that bell effect, right? Whereas, and the other thing about a place like Saskatoon is, it's still affordable for the average working couple. The average working couple can still buy you know, um, at least a, a medium to modest house and afford it. 
a, a detached house that is with a yard and so on and raise a family and what have you whereas in vancouver that's not really possible right so that's another reason why it wouldn't necessarily fall as much you know and anyways and then you look at a place like kitimat it's a small town and it first of all it is still affordable you can still the average working couple could still afford a house so therefore it doesn't need to fall as much and there's lots of potential for industrial jobs right this is you know they they have a huge aluminum smelter there which has been there for many many years and there's it's very difficult to set up an aluminum smelter aluminum is an incredibly valuable commodity worldwide think about even your iphone that's made mostly out of aluminum massive aluminum smelter it's uh you know an ocean uh, a, a deep sea port that ships can come in and they're putting in these uh natural gas exportation uh, facilities in there and natural gas is becoming more and more and more valuable worldwide and it can be shipped worldwide now with liquefaction technology so there is a huge upside potential in terms of employment for people and an affordability factor. So therefore, you know, the rise that it experienced, perhaps, not as great, not nearly as great. It's one of those periphery towns, right, that you see on that chart where you see the, the, the really tall rises taking places in the major centers like Vancouver and Toronto. But then as you go down to the smaller centers, the rise has been smaller and smaller and smaller. So therefore, the fall in that, in that curve effect that skirt tail effect is much less so so in terms of investment portfolios probably obviously it's better to hold real estate during the rise uh when when it's going up right you're better off being in real estate in vancouver and toronto when it's going up but on the downside you're better off being in real estate in the smaller centers that are more diversified in terms of their affordability first of all and their ability to for people to still have jobs because you think about it i don't know what the percentage is but in vancouver say there's maybe 20 or 30 percent of people employed in the real estate market well if the real estate market takes a huge hit and you know half those people don't have work anymore that's 10 percent of the people and a lot of those are well-paying jobs are are gone right when you take a smaller town that's that's an industry town that has agriculture that has mining that has oil and gas that has um, manufacturing and so on maybe only two or three percent of the people are involved in in real estate or five percent or whatever it is so 50 50 percent of those people leave, lose their jobs maybe they can be absorbed in those other industries because after all those are industrial jobs you know which which are similar enough to construction so those places can can absorb them if you take a place like vancouver or victoria it's very difficult to set up a manufacturing facility first of all with all the environmentalism and the regulations and all that sort of stuff and the carbon taxes and everything it's very difficult and the, and the cost of the even even in a downturn the cost of the facility itself is so incredibly high it's very difficult to diversify into you know my god they wanted to set up a, a new not even a new pipeline just upgrade the pipeline to the west coast so that they could refine more oil in the vancouver area and uh all these nimbies and environmentalists don't want it and they're protesting to high heavens that's that's one of the reasons why it's so top heavy on real estate is because it's so difficult to have industry there well they're going to suffer then in a downturn because you don't have as much diversity they always talk about diversity being our strength. Well, you can't have diversity in Vancouver, apparently, because industry is not allowed. So, okay, so when you have a big downturn, you're going to suffer even more because real estate is so heavily weighted in terms of the economy there. So, yeah, uh, if, you know, I, I mean, I've invested in real estate over the years, bought and sold and so on, some in Vancouver and different places. And uh, that doesn't make me an expert on this or whatever. It's just, I just putting out things that I've noticed there, that on the periphery, when you start to see the high rises in places that normally don't have high rises, or the T-cranes, rather, uh, places like Wally World back in the day and now on the prairies, uh, it's time to maybe maybe not consider buying too much unless you get some really good cash flow if, if, if it's an investment. And uh, But if you are going to invest, look up places that like... like 
pockets on the prairies for sure that have a lot of industry and so on that have the numbers that work and you can hold on right so you got positive cash flow and you can hold on or they're just cheap enough and there's a potential upside when this rides through because maybe it's very little down and then it'll come up or maybe even it'll hold steady and then it'll go up uh the main thing is you can hang on for the long term or a place like a place like a, a boom town like a a kitimat or whatever that where the the um there's a huge investment coming in lots of people moving in and the prices are still relatively affordable and uh you know i don't see that in vancouver and victoria right now but in the long term yeah in the long term it'll turn around but in the short term you have uh, extremely high prices that are and and a slowdown in the market which means there's going to have to be um, uh, an, un an unemployment rate that's going to have to eventually kick in and uh, will will the will what industry is there to absorb that unemployment i, I mean i don't know I, I don't see it in some cases it's because like I say, the old saying was years ago was that, you know, we do tourism and real estate. That's the industry here. Tourism will continue, yeah. But if real estate takes a huge hit, that's probably bigger than tourism, or at least as big. And, uh, yeah, so it'll be a bit of pain for a while, but eventually it'll turn around. In the, in the meantime, probably best to be, if possible, out of Vancouver real estate and if going to be in real estate into niche markets that have... Um, more nimble growth to them or at least they'll hold more steady and they'll, po they'll cash flow positively so once again a little bit different uh shout out to this uh what's his name uh former fist for informing me on this on this topic a little bit more anyways and have, have check his stuff out link in the description once again and if you like what i'm doing please like subscribe and share and if you want to contact me link in the description to um talk again soon. Bye for now.